spring is in full bloom here at the farmhouse. In today's video, I wanna share with you some of the flavors, styles, and ways our family is enjoying this beautiful season. say thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring today's video. More on them in a bit. So far we have a very tiny strawberry patch, but me and my three-year-old in his jammies this morning went out and harvested some to make stuffed cream cheese French toast. I tried my first batch of cream cheese with all of the cream and milk we've been getting. I've been in full learning mode, all things dairy. I've, I've been in this for a while, but I need to replace all the dairy that we use with homemade because we are getting so much. One thing that we do enjoy from time to time is cream cheese. To make the cream cheese, I used a mesophilic culture, put it in the cream at room temperature, allowed it to get thick, so that took about 24 hours or so, and then I strained it through a cheesecloth, which I don't actually use cheesecloth, I use flour sack towels. I have a favorite resource, I'll link it below. Until all of the whey came out, which only took a few hours, and I was left with this beautifully creamy cream cheese. So to make the stuffed French toast, I added some powdered sugar, put it between two slices of my whole wheat sourdough sandwich loaf, which isn't really a recipe I have on the blog. I just basically took my sourdough sandwich loaf, I substituted all whole wheat flour for, for the all-purpose, and I substituted buttermilk for the water. Now when I do buttermilk, I have to do a little bit less flour. So instead of four cups of flour, I did three and a half, or you can add more buttermilk either way. So basically there's, there's no recipe for this. <laughs> I kind of have a, a loose idea of the recipe, but then changed it in just about every way possible. I find that stuffed French toast is even more delicious with my sourdough brioche. This is just what I had from fermenting yesterday. After putting the cream cheese mixture between two slices, adding some strawberries, sandwiching it together, I then put it in an egg and milk mixture like normal French toast and cooked it in some butter in a cast iron skillet. Smothered in syrup, this is a delicious spring or summer. As the berries become ripe, all the different types of berries would taste delicious in this context. It had been two years since we got some new chicks on this farm. We are getting plenty of eggs, more than we really need at this point. But with homesteading, you always have to be thinking about the next year. And by next year, some of our oldest laying hens will be five years old. And so we definitely needed to replenish them so that we can ensure that we'll continue to have eggs spring after spring. I want to take a break from this video to tell you about today's sponsor, Thread Up. Thread Up is an online thrift shop where you can sort and look for things that are secondhand. I've been loving Thread Up for a really long time. I ordered all the boys' coats last winter from Thread Up. I like that I can go in, I have my size saved, or if I'm shopping for the kids, I can search by their sizes, search for exactly what I want but then find it for a discounted price. But then also it's a more environmentally conscious choice because I'm getting something that somebody didn't want anymore and buying it that way. I love thrift shopping, but I have a hard time getting out to the stores, to all the thrift shops to get things. And so I love the convenience of shopping on Thrap. I wanna share with you first, this first outfit actually is two different things that I found on ThreadUp. During pregnancy, I really love the high-waisted skirt with the tied t-shirt look. I even will put a tied shirt over top a dress that I think is like hard to wear. You know dresses that have spaghetti straps, you're not really sure what to wear with it. I'll take one of those dresses and then put a t-shirt over top of it. During pregnancy, I did that a lot last time. This top here is from Free People. This is estimated retail value of $51, but the thread up price was $17.99. 
I like when t-shirts have a little extra detail as opposed to just being a t-shirt. It is also 85% cotton and 15% linen, so I love the feel of it. This skirt is made well. Again, I love it. It's a linen skirt, button down. Estimated retail price of $75, thread up price of $29.99. Okay, this next one I just love. It has little ties on the side so I can adjust it to make it nice and fitted right here. I don't think anything I got was actually maternity, but I just find things that could work for maternity. This is the brand Callista. I haven't honestly heard of it. I think I searched casual dresses or something along those lines in my size. It also has pockets. It has an estimated retail price of $51.99. I got it for $22. I just needed to throw a hat on for this adorable little sundress i think it is just really comfortable i was really going for a lot of these easy sheared top but easy to wear dresses i like dresses that aren't spaghetti strap they go down to the floor but they're lightweight with my apron this is the kind of stuff i like to wear it has an estimated retail price of 51 and the thread up price was 23.99 i think everything i got looks cute with the sun hat for the summer Oh, I love this skirt. I just paired it with a top, a tank top. It's like a cropped tank top that I already have in my collection. I meant to wear it with a high-waisted skirt during pregnancy. This is by the brand Reformation. It's linen, so just a really high-quality skirt. 100% linen, so the estimated retail price is $158. Thread-up price, $64.99. Okay, this next dress is an Old Navy, just a very casual, stretchy dress. and. I might wear this with my apron, but planned when I go places <laughs> to wear it with another top I got from Thread Up over top of it. So now I have this cozy, comfortable, stretchy knit maxi dress paired with a linen top. I don't really know how to pronounce the name of this top or the brand name. It's spelled H Y F V E. Estimated retail price of $29. I got it for $12.99. It's 45% linen, 55% cotton. And then the Old Navy dress underneath has an estimated retail price of $42 and a thread up price of $18.99. Compared to new, every time I wear something I bought secondhand, I save enough water to make 74 matcha lattes. Thread up is offering Farmhouse On Boon viewers a really great discount. Usually it's 30% right now it's 40% and you get free shipping on your first order. You can head to the link in the description box below and use the code farmhouse to get that 40% off discount and find some wardrobe staples for you and your family at Thread Up this summer. Earlier this week, I wanted to get two videos shot and I was planning in my head, what am I going to shoot this week? Sometimes I plan way far ahead and have tons of ideas on what I'm going to do. And sometimes I'm kind of winging it. And I said to Luke, okay, I want to get ahead one video. So that way I have a little bit more margin and buffer in my editing. I had an editor for many years and the last year I haven't really had an editor. And so I've been doing this myself. And during the summer, one of my daughters likes to help with editing, but she needs a little bit more time. And so I wanted to get one video ahead. And I told Luke, I don't really know what I'm gonna shoot this week, but I have to make two videos. And he said, well, why don't you show an all-American cookout in the backyard? Because he's been working on landscaping and refinishing the table. So as a content creator, sometimes the biggest key is to not overthink things and just share what you're doing. Now, there are a time and a place for st strategizing. And then there's a time and a place for sharing what's going on in your life. And that's what I've been defaulting to a lot lately. So right then and there, I got some sourdough hamburger bun dough going. I let it ferment on the counter for about 12 hours. And then I put it in the fridge overnight. I shaped it just now. And after it rises, I will be baking it for our lunch cookout today. In the meantime, we have some very beautiful flowers right now in season. There are peonies, irises, and a lot of you pronounce it peonies, I believe. I think it's regional. And then some various other things that I don't even necessarily know what all we have that pops up that I can make bouquets from. This time of year is amazing because there's always something coming up starting about a month ago so that we can always have fresh flowers. Now, I don't always get around to having fresh flowers on the table, but the option is there. And when I have it, I always think, why don't I do this 
every single day. It adds so much beauty and joy to the kitchen, more than the amount of effort that it takes. It's totally worth it. We unfortunately did not inherit a lot of plants and flowers whenever we moved to this property. You would think being a 150 or 160 year old farmstead, there would have been stuff popping up all over the place. But unfortunately, all we really have is some random irises that end up being inside the pasture for the most part. There's some further down the hill as well. But since they go largely unappreciated because of their location behind the wood pile and in the pasture. I have no problem cutting them. I also like to cut a few unopened blooms. I do this a lot with a lot of my flower arrangements. I think they look really pretty. And in the case of peonies, they actually continue to open up. I still have this honeysuckle plant in the landscaping, which is actually a weed, it's invasive, but I can't get rid of it because I love it for its greenery. And I know we have a lot of them throughout the property and other places we don't want them. But this one's so convenient. I told Luke, let's just leave it for a while. I really like the greenery that it adds. I think it's really pretty. So it's technically a weed, but I'm enjoying it for adding in filler greenery into all of my arrangements. I had big plans this year of planting these planters here by the back door with only herbs. I was gonna do a whole bunch of them. That would be my herb garden and not planting any herbs out in the regular garden. And then my sage came back so beautifully and my thyme that I decided that I still needed an entire herb bed out in the garden. And then I wanted some color, so I ended up putting flowers in these. So anyways, there are some herbs. We are pulling the table back out of the garage. Luke brought it in there and sanded it. This is a teak table that we invested in last spring or summer. I can't remember exactly when it was. It unfortunately showed a lot of wear very quickly. I don't know if that's just how it's supposed to be. I read that it was the most resilient outdoor wood and that's why we chose it, but it really was brought back to life with a little bit of sanding and teak oil and then we're going to protect it better. So Luke found this tablecloth at an auction. There are these online auctions, which if you can find those in your area, you get all kinds of cheap stuff. We got some more mixing bowls since, as I mentioned in a recent video, we've broken a lot of our antique mixing bowls, but he found a bunch of those, he found tablecloths and a few other things for really good prices. So we are going to start using a tablecloth to protect this outdoor table. The first time we used it, it got really dirty. I flipped it over and then we'll use it again. And then after two or three times, I'll throw it in the wash and repeat, repeat. These hamburger buns have been rising for about an hour. I'll start the oven so that I can do a few other things and they'll rise more. Because we have this center spot here on the oven, it's a really good warming spot when the oven's on to accelerate the rising of any bread product. I'll quickly share the recipe here. If you are wanting a printable variety, you can get that over at farmhouseonboon.com and search sourdough buns. So about 24 hours ago, I got half a cup of sourdough starter, three quarters cup warm water, three cups all-purpose flour, quarter cup of melted coconut oil, you can also use butter, three tablespoons of honey, a teaspoon of salt, and one egg. Going in my stand mixer with the dough hook until it was a smooth, glossy dough. This, a lot of times with these wetter doughs, takes longer than you expect, but then it does eventually cling to that dough hook and come together even when it seems like it might not ever do it. So I leave it for a pretty good long while. I let it rise about half the time at room temperature and then half the time in the fridge. This was just because of timing. Whenever I got it going, by bedtime it had already risen quite a bit. So you can always pause things in the refrigerator if you think you started it too early. Totally works to pause it. Now normally I have this recipe making eight buns. That's how I have it written out on the blog. More recently, I feel like it's too much bread, especially when your starter is nice and active and it gets really fluffy. And so I divided it this time into 10. I'm going to experiment with 12 because still it made some really good size buns, all with the original recipe that I normally do eight with. So I'm testing that out. I will eventually change it on the blog. So for now it says eight, but I easily got away with 10 this time and maybe even I could do 12. I'm whipping up a batch of homemade mayo. Ever since greens have been in season, 
We have been making a lot more dressings than we were over the winter and a beautiful base for dressings, at least my favorite, is mayo. I know you guys have seen me make this a thousand times if you follow along, but you might be new to my channel. I get an egg in the bottom of the jar. Now today I added it on top of the white because I had separated the white and the yolk so that I could do an egg wash with just the yolk. So I didn't wanna waste that white. And a lot of times if we throw it back in the fridge, it just ends up going to waste. So I just used an egg plus an egg white, added in a little bit of apple cider vinegar, mustard, salt, a cup of avocado oil. I no longer measure. It always works. So I don't really feel like I have to be super precise. If you want super precise measurements, that's also over on the blog. Just go to farmhouseonmoon.com, search avocado mayo. I think it's way different than what I just said because you can use any acidic things. You can use lemon juice, which is what the recipe calls for, or you can use apple cider vinegar if you don't have a lemon. So it's very adaptable. I'm just patting up some burgers to throw on the grill. Sometimes I mix things in with the burgers like onions or some breadcrumbs, an egg. I guess that would make it like a mini meatloaf. Today, I'm just doing meat and salt. I baked the buns until they were nice and dark. I forgot to mention that I added sesame seeds, even though I'm sure that was very obvious. You don't have to do sesame seeds. I had them on hand and I keep them on hand because I'm a food photographer for my livelihood with the blog. And with that, extra little details like sesame seeds are very important. I also boiled some potatoes and some eggs to make the potato salad. For the eggs, I'm gonna be dicing up the whites to put into the potato salad, and then I'm going to mash the yolks into some mayo and mustard and salt for a dressing for the potato salad. Also adding diced onions and celery, and then salting it to taste. Of course, tis the season for adding herbs to absolutely everything. For today's selection, I have thyme and sage. I'll have tons of basil in about a month for now. They're too sparse to pick from. But the addition of herbs into this potato salad really makes it so much more flavorful. I like to use every opportunity all season long to add herbs to everything that I possibly can. share with you a recipe that I've been working on for the blog that we are really enjoying. I will say it's the taste of spring and summer because you can add freshly made jams. Now, of course, you can make these any time of year, 
They are always delicious. These are sourdough Danish pastries. This is a very similar recipe to a croissant because you are laminating the dough, which means that you take some butter and you flatten it out into a little rectangle and then fold it inside dough. In this case, it's a sourdough dough that's been fermenting and roll it out and fold it again and roll out again and fold it again and until you have all of these flaky layers. So let me explain to you the recipe as you are watching me make it here. Add three cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of sugar, a half a cup of active and bubbly sourdough starter, three quarters cup of whole milk, and one egg, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and a teaspoon of salt to the bowl of a stand mixer with the dough hook attached. Mix on low speed until the dough becomes smooth and glossy. Now you can also do this by hand. You will mix and knead to make a shaggy sticky dough and then allow it to auto lice a bit and then continue to knead for about five to 10 minutes. Form the dough into a ball and place it in a bowl. Cover it with plastic wrap, foil or a beeswax wrap, something that's not going to allow a lot of air in, and then place it in a warm spot for about four hours. Then place the bowl in the refrigerator to continue fermenting for about eight hours or up to three days. So you can get that dough going, get it in the refrigerator, and then revisit it whenever you want to. For the butter block, I get a six by eight inch rectangle formed with parchment paper place in two sticks of butter and then roll it out until it fills up the parchment paper. You're aiming for a block of butter that's about six by eight inches. It doesn't have to be super precise, but you just want to make sure that the pastry dough fits around and entirely encases the butter. You're going to want to chill the butter for about 10 minutes. You want to make sure it stays really cold so that way those nice flaky layers happen, just like with a pie crust or biscuit dough. Having that cold butter is what creates the layers. Next, remove the pastry dough from the refrigerator and roll it out to about 16 by eight. Place the butter packet in the middle of the dough. Fold the edges over so that it completely encases the butter. Pinch the seams and then roll it out again into a 16 by eight inch rectangle. Then you'll fold the dough by fourths, so folding the edges into the center and then folding that in half to create four layers of dough. Then put it back in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, roll it out 16 by eight again, and then again, fold it in fourths like you did before. Then put it back in the refrigerator for two hours or up to 12 hours. So again, you can make this more quickly, but you can also pause it many times throughout the process. For the pastries, you'll roll it out into a 16 by 12 inch rectangle, cut it down the center by thirds and then four equal parts. So that way you're ending up with 12 total. Press the four corners into the middle. And then this is where you can fill it with a cream cheese filling, which I have a recipe over on the blog. It's basically just cream cheese, egg, sugar, vanilla. You can do any jam. So it's strawberry season right now. You can make a strawberry jam to make strawberry Danish pastries. I like to brush it with an egg wash before baking it in a 400 degree oven. I realized that was a lot of instruction, so you can head over to parmesanmood.com and print it off if you want to try this. Again, the bird's eye view of this process is to make the dough, allow it to ferment, get it in the fridge, then make the butter packet, then put that inside three or four times, roll it out, fold it, roll it out, fold it. You're just creating all of these layers. That's the bird's eye view. It sounds kind of complicated as I read the instructions, but in reality, it doesn't feel all that complicated once you kind of understand the process and it's really so good. We ate these so fast. I need to make another batch of these really soon. Yes, I just have some natural jams from the store. That's because I'm repeatedly testing this for the blog, but I am very excited to do this with some homemade jams this summer. And then of course it's optional, but while you're making this treat, you might as well make a little icing. I did powdered sugar and milk. It makes a nice glaze to really finish these off and make them a delicious treat. I hope that you are enjoying spring wherever you are. If it's spring where you are, this is my favorite time of year. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new, please hit that subscribe button. I make a new video every week on food from scratch, natural living and a handmade home.